Hello everybody and welcome back to World of Warships Legends. My name is Spartan Elite 43 and tonight I have a video sent to me by none other than Turtle Man. And he promises that this is going to be a ridiculous video. So, hopefully you guys are ready. We are going to be in the République. That's the best I got. Hopefully Opie doesn't get mad at me because I know she's always getting on me for my French pronunciations, but I do try. I'm just not very good at it. <laughs> but we, either way, we're on Land of Fire. We spawn in the middle, and we'll see which way he decides to go. Now, just looking at the map, we've got two destroyers and a battleship on the right. We've got a bunch of battleships on the left. And there's you and a destroyer and a cruiser in the middle. Now, in this situation, he does appear to be making the right call, which is to head towards the right side of the map. Now, he could sit here, he doesn't have to go all the way to the right, but at least being in a situation where you could help that side if they need it, because destroyers are incredibly powerful, right? Everybody knows. But, you also don't want destroyers to be the only thing on that flank, because they can be very, very vulnerable. Uh, but fortunately, there is only one cruiser on the enemy team but our Sumner's doing the right thing immediately going forward trying to spot for the team he's not just dive bombing straight into the cap or at least it doesn't look like it maybe maybe he will but uh, he did swing out wide of the island initially to spot and now we are already spotted which tells me that there's a destroyer that spawned across from us and our Sumner should be about to spot him at any point now, Vanguard gets spotted going away from the middle, so we know that's one of the three ships that spawn middle. We know that there's somebody in the cap with our Sumner now, which we can assume is a destroyer. And then, of course, the radar cruiser gets spotted, the Tulsa, and the Tulsa goes broadside. Unfortunately, we've got HE loaded immediately, which you never want to see. Maybe he was expecting the destroyer to be the first thing spotted, and uh, unfortunately for our Sumner, that wasn't the first thing spotted. But Sumner needs to disengage here, get out of there, and then you can see Sumner decides to panic smoke here. With the radar cruiser that close, you're not going to get away with smoke. So just run and get, get jiggy with it, you know what I'm saying? And down goes our Sumner. No surprise there. Again, one of those situations where you just got to be a little bit more careful. Fortunately, we are starting to shoot AP here, but unfortunately, he's going to be behind smoke. We're not going to be able to spot him. It'll come down to our cruiser keeping him lit up. And, I mean, this Tulsa's begging for it. If you get much better angle than this, like, it's it's over for that Tulsa. Even at this angle, I wouldn't be surprised to see a dev strike pop up. Because Tulsa is, like, it's just like any other American cruiser. But, unfortunately, he goes dark right as the shells are getting close. I have no idea what happened. Other than we missed. So, it would have been interesting to see where those shells landed. Uh, could have it, they looked incredibly like well grouped so it's unfortunate but look at our destroyers our destroyers have killed a destroyer on the right but they're not in a cap um, meanwhile the other two or the other team has a mid cap which is very hard to get people out of or get the uh, mid cap uh, at any point during the game but uh, oh my god that I was in trouble oh my god <laughs> Yeah, that was that was never never gonna end well for that Iowa. He got very very unlucky for the uh, amount of citadels, but uh, still very very nasty hit. And that's what you can get out of the Rape of Bulik occasionally. It doesn't happen all the time. That's the dispersion you could expect more often than not. Especially if you're running a um, reload build, which apparently Turtle Man is. And you'll see that towards the end of this battle, I'm sure he's going to have quite like an 18 second reload on the Ray, Pub uh, the Ray Public. But uh, here, once again, we got another shot at an overangle Tulsa. He's turning away from us, but there are also battleships on the other side. So the Tulsa putting himself in this sandwich position, he's put himself right in the middle of a crossfire. Uh, he's going after our cruiser, which is admirable. But you already know that you're being shot at by one battleship, and you're driving right up into the multiple battleships. But uh, did not lead the Tulsa enough here. And that's pretty impressive considering the fact that uh, the Republic is pretty well known for having high-velocity guns. Like, you don't have to aim super far ahead. But uh, Tulsa does make the decision to turn back towards us. That dispersion is horrendous. We're only getting one shell on target. So we go from dev striking in Iowa 
to just one shell on a cruiser. Cruiser's burning to death, so we shouldn't need to fire here. Uh, he may fire just for the, the securing the kill, because it looks like Tulsa may be trying to heal through the fire. So that'll be one Tulsa down, finally. It took him a long time to get rid of that Tulsa. That's the way it goes sometimes. Palmer is like, nope, I'm out. After seeing what happened to that Iowa, that Palmer is like, I can't be bothered to uh, take on this Republic. Clearly, RNG just favors the Republic more. Not to mention, it's Palmer. What is the Palmer going to do at any sort of range against the Republic other than die? Uh, the guns are going to be ineffective, and I mean, you can see just every time that the Republic takes a shot at your broadside, you're going to have a bad day. Uh, the only reason he ain't dead with the Iowa right there is probably because of the fact that activated. he has Turtleback. But even then, I wouldn't expect the Turtleback to have saved him in that situation. Oh my god, Fletcher gets spotted. If he leads him, at, I don't know if he... Okay, didn't matter. I was going to say, I don't know if he led him enough. Are Tulsa helping on that side? And you can see that side completely collapsed. And again, this is one of those situations where you've got to read what the enemy is doing. Because your team has collapsed. Uh, the teams are very even, but one flank has entirely collapsed. You haven't had the cap advantage for any point during this match. The enemy is going to have a 2-1 to one cap advantage on you. And that gives them a huge point advantage. They have a 100 point advantage, which means you have to kill an extra battleship just to have a chance in this one against the points. That's how quickly things can change. That That is the, the biggest map control aspect of when you see teams getting caps. It can quickly get out of hand and put you into a situation later in the game where you've played really well, but you're still in an unwinnable situation because you've not had any cap advantage during the match. Now, I'm not saying that he should have went forward and helped that destroyer. That destroyer made a bad call. Every, he, he initially makes the right call by swinging wide of the island, avoiding going straight into the cap, because most of the time you go straight into the middle cap on this map, you're going to get jumped by a cruiser. You should have you should have seen that coming. There was only one cruiser, so it's a, it's a little bit of a, uh, you know, what are the odds that the one thing that perfectly counters me spawns directly across from me? Well, it, take it from me. It happens more often than not, okay? Uh, the Vanguard appears to be changing course here. It looked like he was he was slowing down to go forward. So I'm not sure how good these shots were. If they do hit, they're going to be nasty. And, oh my god, we got unlucky. But the Vanguard did stay in a straight line. Now, we get spotted momentarily here while we're crossing the gap. Uh, got very fortunate to get out of there as somebody took a shot at our broadside. Eh? Vanguard is definitely sitting still right now. And now he's going forward. So you can watch the smoke on a ship to see. And I don't know if he led him enough with this one. I know it's high velocity shells, but he was going forward. And yeah, probably didn't lead him enough there. A little bit more lead would have probably ended it with a pretty nasty hit. Remember, Vanguard is very, very susceptible to citadels. Uh, especially at any sort of range, but very susceptible to citadels. And here, a little bit better lead. Somebody's trying to be sneaky with their torpedoes through the gap. These look nasty. And wait for it. Yeah, that, that was that was the shot that we were looking for. So that's a second dev strike. He's up to 160,000 damage. He's got three kills. He's got a Palmer on the run. He's got a destroyer somewhere in the middle of the map. Never mind, the destroyer is now dead. So that's huge. Uh, our team still has two destroyers, and we are just absolutely punishing the Palmer and again there's not much the Palmer can do here and one thing I want you guys to to watch towards the end of this match is as battleship captains we tend to get lulled into only using armor piercing and trust me armor piercing is fantastic and 90 percent of the time you're going to want to use armor piercing but there is times where having high explosive is going to be advantageous uh, especially when you're up against very heavily armored, very well angled or bow in opponents, AP may not always be the best option. So you can see he takes a shot at the Musashi there. He's hoping that the Musashi decides to charge forward and open up the angle. 
but Musashi starting to chip away, as only Musashi and Yama can, just absolutely yeeting health points away, so we've got to be careful here. Uh, at this point, you can see he fired another salvo. Again, the worst dispersion you've ever seen in your life. Not going to be that effective against a well-angled Musashi. However, now he's got HE loaded, and now he's going to start the party. And uh, first shot out, of course, HE, perfect, perfect dispersion, right? And gets the double fire immediately, plus does significant damage. That triggers the immediate damage con from the Musashi, which is going to lead to a... Oh, oh my god, we've got AP loaded. He's broadside, so this isn't the worst. But again, one of those situations where you're like, okay, well, do just damage con, so maybe hold on to it, but nope. We get double Citadel, you love to see it. Um, at this range, I wasn't expecting the Republic to get the Citadels, but then again, I've been in this situation before with my Republic, and it'll Citadel things at ranges that you just don't expect uh, because of the uh, high velocity nature of the shells. Like these shells just seem to, to work. Um, these guns are nasty. That's why I say that the Republic is the best tier, tier uh, 8 battleship in the game. Like, it just is. Um, here, we take a shot. We just nick the back of the Marco Polo and get a, a fire here. And again, Marco Polo, another one of those very tanky while it's well-angled or bow in. So, trying to hit the bow of the ship to get another fire here. He's getting chewed up by our battleship there, and then we do get the fire. So, now we know that the Marco is burning at least twice. Now, uh, I would say he's got three fires on, so in this situation you would know that the enemy ship does not run fight fire with fire. So getting another fire here, or just getting damage in general, is going to help get him off the board. And we take him down, picking up our Kraken with the damage over time. And we're up to 255,000 damage. Now I've had some good games in the Republic. I think at this point he's already passed my max that I've ever done in this ship. And uh, there's still a very very healthy palmer out here now one thing that you gotta remember like you gotta start like a lot of people don't do this but you gotta really pay attention to the ships that you're up against and weighing what are the odds that somebody is running a particular perk now with the case of german battleships you can pretty much assume that anybody that has any sort of oh my god that dispersion was good and it started to spread a little bit but it's still pretty good grouping and, uh, yeah, right into the superstructure. A few of those shells did nothing, but most of them did some damage. But, uh, in the case of most German battleships, you're going to be running fight fire with fire because you're running the commander Hyde. And Hyde does not have the option for will to rebuild. So it's either running with scissors or fight fire with fire, right? And most of the time, you're going to see fight fire with fire. Now... The reason I bring this up is he gets a fire there, the guy damage comes, right? It's not that big, a, um, not that big of a surprise, given the fact that the guy has less than uh, a fifth of a, or less than a quarter of his health left, and then you get the double fire. At this point, you have to load AP. The reason being, because if you if you load or if you get a third fire, you can almost guarantee that the fire is going to go out. And so he fires his guns out there. You've also got a cruiser spamming him with HE. But, of course, we get another fire. And, lo and behold, there's the damage con. Now, he could have managed to get a little bit more damage here. And he would have gotten the kill on this Pomern if it wasn't for him getting that third fire. But, uh, unfortunately, he does not. But, fortunately, I mean, just look at the damage. Dude put up over 300,000 damage and a five-piece Kraken. 302-045. Top of the leaderboard, 3,300 base XP with a Confederate High Cal Kraken and a uh, couple of Dev Strikes thrown in there for good measures. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Uh, have you guys noticed that certain ships tend to have Fight Fire with Fire? Or do you just assume that everybody has Fight Fire with Fire until proven otherwise? Let me know down in the comments below, and Turtle Man, thank you so much for sending this video in for me to react to. It was a doozy of a match. And if you like what I'm doing, punch the like button, leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, I will see you in the next video.